Well, speaking of more information out there and Elon Ooh. on Twitter. Ooh. Uh, Elon gave us more information on the rap vac. I don't know if you guys know if you remember we're please we, tell me this is a new album. <laughs> his new album, rap rap vac. <laughs> it's about it's a rap album about it's vacuums. Like 1995 hip hop. <laughs> so if you guys remember, um, a few weeks ago we talked about the vacuum Raptor engine, the vacuum optimized Raptor engine that was uh, you know getting shipped out to McGregor. Uh, it, we're showing a picture here from Twitter, from SpaceX's Twitter, of the Raptor vacuum compared to the sea level or the standard vacuum, their standard Raptor. Um, and basically, it just has a bigger skirt, a bigger nozzle, uh, which uh, leads to a bigger expansion ratio. But we got some great details uh, following this video here. <laughs> You can even hear the spin up of the Raptors. Um, so it goes from like spinning up to firing in about one second, which is really, really quick uh, for uh, a turbo, you know, especially for anything really. The space shuttle took like seven seconds to spin up and this is crazy. So we got some details, you know, this was, this was kind of a risky thing, like a 50-50, will it even survive? Because firing a vacuum engine at sea level can actually cause a lot of uh, flow separation. We've talked about that before where because the as the nozzle gets bigger, the pressure, the gas pressure drops. Uh, the It exchanges that pressure for velocity. So the more you expand that nozzle out, the lower the pressure inside the nozzle gets, the faster the exhaust is going. But you can actually get to the point where you're, you're always basically at sea level going to expand that out lower than the atmospheric pressure here at sea level. And uh, and they did went way below because this this one is uh, 107 to one expansion ratio. That's really high um, for something being fired at sea level. That's extremely high expansion ratio. Um, so just for reference, the space shuttle, I think is the, um, cause they have that RS-25 engine on the, the main engines is also the same RS-25 type of engine that's going to be on the, the SLS. Those engines are expanded, I think to 77 to one, which was, I think about as high as I had ever heard of anything being at fired at sea level. Now, the reason they can do a higher expansion ratio here of the Raptor vacuum on a stand is because it's braced. You can actually see braces. Mm -hmm. on it because what happens is if you don't brace your nozzle because the the pressure is lower at the end of the the exit of the nozzle than ambient air ambient air pressure will actually sneak back into the nozzle and it'll do so kind of in an uncontrolled fashion you know it'll be, they'll create these pressure waves and then you know once one little pressure pocket kind of closes it'll expand on the other side and do all this stuff and it literally will resonate in this nozzle and eventually just destroy your nozzle and if you destroy your nozzle, your engine's not going to work, <laughs> especially when uh, your fuel flows through that nozzle. Your engine will very much not work very quickly if, if your nozzle gets destroyed. So um, so to fire 107 at sea level is substantial. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's likely due to extra bracing. And uh, yeah, I mean, but really cool that it, it, it worked well. Um, I'm trying to remember if Elon kept talking more about this. Okay, so uh, Pranay says on uh, was asking about you can see a little bit of flow separation. That's those kind of white spots at the very tips of the nozzles. That is where ambient air is pushing in against the flow and pushing against the nozzle and the little shock diamonds. And Elon said that um, it didn't seem to be a problem as far as shock wave instability and vibrations. He said, doesn't seem to be a problem. We could probably increase air ra area ratio given 330 bar max demonstrated chamber pressure. So, wow. Um, so that, just so I'm clear, that expansion ratio is, is that the pressure inside the compression chamber versus the outside the... The engine bell. It it's actually the difference between the throat. So there's the expand. There's the chamber, and it yeah. chokes down to the throat, okay. which is going to be you know literally, you know, measurable by your hands, like basketball to baseball right. size, basically, you know, something around there. So that the area of that circle compared to the area of the exit of the full nozzle. So that so, so the area in the throat is one, and the outside 
is the 107. Exactly. Like it's expanding out 107 times. Exactly. 107 yeah, okay. times for the area. Yep. Yeah. So because of, I, I don't remember the math, you know, it's R, you know, it's the area of a circle. So what is that? Um, R squared. Pi R squared. Pi R squared. There we go. Um, so yeah, it's it's the little circles area versus the the exit, uh, the nozzle exits area ratio. So 107 is 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 very high. Um, but one of the reasons you can actually have a higher expansion ratio. So remember, each for each basically a little bit of expansion ratio, you're exchanging pressure, high pressure for low pressure, right? So say you have 35 to one. You know, I don't know the exact math. I'm just going to make something up. 35 to one. Say you have 300 atmospheres inside the combustion chamber, which is what the, the Raptor has. Mm. If you choke it down and then expand it out and you get down to, well, let's pretend at 35 to one, that's your, that gets it down to one bar. So if you go beyond that, say 40 to one, 50 to one, all of a sudden it's getting below ambient sea, sea pressure or sea level. The thing is, if you increase the chamber pressure, that same 35 to one, if you go say up to 330 bar, you're starting with greater pressure inside the combustion chamber. So by the time you choke it and expand it out to 35 to one, now it's actually above ambient air pressure at the exit. So you can mm. do a greater expansion ratio if your chamber pressure is higher. All things equal, if you have two engines and one's at 250 bar and one's at 350 bar, you can expand out the one that's 350 bar um, and still, you know, and have a, a bigger nozzle and still have the exit pressure be the same as the lower pressure one. So you can actually exchange more of that pressure for velocity, you can increase the efficiency by having a higher chamber pressure inside the engine. So sorry, that's really like convoluted. No, I think I, I follow. Uh, yeah, okay, good. Uh, and so that's one of the, the cool things with Raptor is that they have now hit 330 bar. They've hit a higher target than their initial, you know, originally they're talking about um, like 250 being operational. Then they were like, well, we're hitting 276 now or 279. They're like, oh, we're hitting 300. And the other day, just a, a month ago or so, they hit 330 bar and everything looked great. So just increasing the pressure inside the engine, which allows them uh, to, to have a higher expansion ratio. But the thing, the thing is, though, is uh, with the now specifically with Starship, don't forget, you can't really keep expanding out the nozzle too much because you're trying to cram dozens of these <laughs> inside of a nine meter booster. So they can't just, you know, yes, you can exchange that, that you know, have a higher expansion ratio, um, make a bigger skirt and actually have higher exhaust velocity, have a more efficient engine. But you can't really do it too much because you won't be able to fit them physically inside the nine meter diameter of Starship. But there is a trick. So the, depending on where you're at in development here, the other trick is they could choke the, the throat more. So say you have the same exact physical nozzle exit if you shrink your throat more, you can you can actually increase your your expansion ratio still. Now, of course, you will reduce your flow when you do that. So you might have to have smaller machinery, smaller turbo pumps, all this stuff. So everything kind of shrinks with it. So that normally the more conventional way is just make the nozzle bigger. But if you don't have room to do that, the next design thing might be actually starting to make the engine smaller on the top, like the power packs, you know, the turbo pump machinery, the the combustion chamber, the nozzle slightly smaller. And, and actually be as powerful as they were when they're bigger. So it's, it's this weird relationship, mm -hmm. and I'm sure we'll see the, Merlin, or the, the Raptor continue to evolve. But, um, yeah, it's just it's, it's nuts. When you're seeing all these numbers out here, this is, like, this is genuinely next-level stuff. You know? So what does that mean in terms of the end product? Uh, fewer engines, maybe? Or it can push bigger payloads more power? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean... All of the above. Yeah. When... When you have increased efficiency and increased thrust, it means the booster has room to physically grow. You know, you could actually carry more fuel to begin with. You know, your, your liftoff weight, your liftoff mass can be higher. So therefore you can, you know, actually go further, do have more Delta V in the vehicle. It means you could reduce the number of engines, which reduces your dry mass. You're not carrying around the weight of engines that can do the same amount of work. Um, you can, there's a lot of trade-offs you can do. But um, having an engine that's uh, just more efficient and uh, more vacuum optimized, even at sea level, is phenomenal. So we're just going to see, yeah, we're just going to see a, a good amount of this stuff happening. Um, they're continuing to tweak this stuff, um, continuing to, you know, it's just continuing to evolve. And it's, it's awesome. And it's kicking absolute butt by the, by the looks of things. Yeah. 
So just to uh, take this discussion down a notch, uh, when when you were talking about choking down the the throat hole of the the thing, yeah, I, I think uh, Tim, you'll appreciate this. For some reason, the visual I get in my head is that episode of I Think You Should Leave, where they replace the guy's <laughs> toilet with one that's made just for farts. Yes, with the tiny <laughs> hole. That's the visual I got in my head. Was like the the hole in the toilet <laughs> choking down to. You replace my toilet with a joke toilet that's just for farts? Yeah. You're not part of the turbo team. <laughs> Don't run. For those of you who have not seen, I think you should leave. <laughs> For the five people who get this reference yeah. that we're making. Yeah. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash yt. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.